All right, so I didn't record myself pulling this apart because one, I didn't know how to necessarily the first time. This is the first time I've ever torn one apart and it saves time by just going over how I did it after the fact and trying to record it and go through and edit out mishaps, bloopers, and et cetera, and along with a lot of language. So anyways, here are the steps for you to pull, pull apart your I did it column. If one, you need to just paint it or powder coat it and you don't want to risk it. Well, obviously if you're powder coating, you gotta put it in an oven. So you gotta take the plastic whatnots off and you gotta get rid of the grease and all that good stuff. So you need to strip it down to a bare shaft. Or two, if you're doing an e-pass setup like what I'm doing with that motor. So first off, this is a Nissan Versa e-pass. And it's actually out of a 2011 Nissan Versa. And I'm gonna have to go back and do some more research before I actually commit to cutting this stuff because I might change up to like using a Saturn View e-pass system instead. I'm not sure. I gotta read the pros and cons of each system because I kind of just jumped the gun and ordered stuff because there was only one on eBay and it was a decent price. So I snagged it. I might end up reselling it or I might end up making this column with this motor and end up changing it down the road, which I really don't want to do. But if I don't like it, I might change it. Who knows? So anyways, what I'm going to go through is just how to pull the column part to get this shaft and to strip this to a bare column. So step one, you'll have to pull off your, any of your column mount or your wheel mounts, strip it back to how it was when you bought it. So no steering wheel adapters or anything like that, where you just have this on top and this. So your first step will be to pull this snap ring. Get yourself a good pair of snap ring pliers. These, there's the part number, channel lock 927. You can get these on Amazon. This is a good pair. There's a little red handled piece of junk ones you get at AutoZone. Throw those in the trash, they're pretty much useless. These come with changeable tips and a bag of tips along with, oh, no need to flip things around. You literally just <gasps> flip a switch. Now they're the other way. Flip a switch. Now they're the other way. They're amazing. They're like. 20, 30 bucks maybe, I don't know. They weren't expensive. They're worth every penny. So anyways, pull this snap ring. When you do, don't be startled. This has a spring, it's gonna pop up some. I have a feeling when I go to reassemble it, I'm gonna have to put that snap ring, it snaps onto right here, on the shaft. Cause see, so you can't get to the groove. The groove is right there, it's covered up. So I'm guessing you're gonna have to put the snap ring on the shaft. Now I'll probably have to get some PVC or a pipe that slips over the shaft and use it to press down on the snap ring and this little groove here to press this into position because it's got a good little bit of spring tension. I don't think you're gonna be able to push it down with one hand and snap that ring in place with another. So anyways, make sure you keep your stuff in order when you pull it apart. So that's gonna pop loose. You don't do that yet. I think you pull this first. So. Anyways, so you're gonna wanna tape these, deep in these wires. All you need is a pick, like so. Unless you have deep pinning tools, get yourself a pick. And if you have a GM harness, you're gonna have this. If you have a, the Ford harness or whatever, I don't know how the deep pinning works on those because I don't remember, but if you have one like this, you just feed it in through this hole, plus, push down on the little pins, which I have taped up, you can't see, but it has a little little spring keyway. You just push that little key down and they pull out. So put a little tension on the back of the wire here and just pull it out. Once you get them all deep pinned, you're gonna to wanna to tape them up. They originally were taped up more flat than this. The tape has slowly pulled them together. So I'll probably have to re-tape them when I go to feed them back through because you're pulling them through an oval shaped hole. So you wanna keep it kind of flat, not round it's a ribbon. So anyways, when you do, you want to tape them up, obviously, and you want to tape on a piece of wire. Now this wasn't cut originally, obviously. I pulled wire through it. That's so you can fish the wire back through when you get done. Make sure you do that. Once it's apart, I can easily fish this back through to pull it. It's not that hard to get to that hole. But anyways, you're gonna have to pull string it in there. It's kind of tight. So I left this, so all I have to do is tie a loop, twist it, 
and pull it back through. This comes off with three screws that go in hole, hole, hole. You have to turn your turn signal to get to this one down here. So make sure you click your turn signal, whichever way to free it up so you can get to it. One of the screws is longer. Don't worry. Recessed, short. Recessed, short. Not recessed, long. All right, pretty sure I got that right. If not, I'll find out when I go to reassemble and one screw doesn't reach. So anyways, you, you fish this out. When you fish this out, you kind of have to push on the wire some to help feed it out. Like I said, it's snug. Be careful. You also have to push in your little uh, hazard light switch. Get something to push that in. Obviously, you'll have to disassemble, take the knobs and all this stuff off the column. But push that in so it'll feed out. Once you feed that out, I think it's once you pull that, then you do the snap ring. So sorry, I jumped the gun a bit. Pull your snap ring, this pops loose. All right, this little sleeve, all it is is a cover. It covers over a little bushing or bearing that is, I want to say this little piece right here, sleeves that with this. It's pretty much just a sleeve for this, I believe. Yeah, sleeves in there. Something like that. So anyways, that. Keep them in order. Then you'll get to these screws, which go in these holes that hold this tube on. Take those screws out. This just pops off the end. Store that aside. Next, if you have a tilt column, you have this lovely piece. You do not have to pull this. I pulled it because I'm powder coating and this is a greasy piece and I didn't want to have to clean the shit out of it and re-grease it. These are red Loctited. I didn't know that when I pulled them. Hopefully I didn't tear up threads when I pulled them out. I'll be having real fun when I put it back together. I guess that's why the I did it folks told me that this didn't, these screws didn't need to be touched. I didn't happen to mention they were red Loctited in. I would have put some heat on them before I dug at them out. But anyways, leave that in if possible. You don't need to pull it to cut the column for, for EPAS. Onto this piece. When you go to pull this, you have this spring mechanism. You'll see this cap on the end. You see it's got little tabs. They didn't really go over how to pull this. I, I think this is a, it's one of those square Screwdriver got one of these uh, Tekken kits. It does not have this size. I actually did the my column removal kind of the wrong way because I didn't remove the spring first. You're supposed to push this in and turn it because it's notched right here. See the notches? See the holes where it would slide out? So yeah, normally you compress the spring in, twist it, and it'll pop out. And you can pull out this guide rod here, spring, etc., out the front. That relieves tension off of this, all right? This is a big, your big tilt pivot piece. It hooks on these little hook levers down here or what hook on to these tabs. And that's what pivots. Next, once you free that spring up, you have these two pins. These are on the sides, all right? They go in right here and on the opposite side. That is your pivot pins. They pass through that hole into those holes. You will thread in an 832 screw. You can see it's bent a little bit because the easiest way I saw to do this because I don't have a little mini slide hammer is to thread in that screw, clamp on a pair of vice grips and give it a smack with the rubber mallet. I was just smacking on this tab right here. So I wanted to bend it, but it got it out. There's not a whole lot of resistance on them. They're not super press fit, so they come out easy. Mine didn't want to come out so well because, well, the uh, I still have my spring and giving tension on them. So, anyways, once you get that loose, then to free this these clips, these hooks, from that, you will have to put your rod back in this little lever and kind of lift to release these uh, tabs. See when you press on it, it wants to pull, see? So you need to put your arm back in or a screw or whatever so you can work that and you'll disengage it from that and it'll just slide right off. Once that's off, your steering shaft will come out completely out the front. 
Like I said, this can stay in the column, unless you like me and your powder coating. I wanted it out of the way, so it's bare shaft, because I don't, I need to sandblast this column. I don't want sand grit getting in any of that. Um, next, onto the column. The last bit of uh, removal, there is this shaft, or I mean this uh, end cap. I'll be putting that back in when I'm done, probably, once I cut the column down, if I can. That's just a roll pin that goes in right that hole. The roll pin is right there. Just get a punch, knock that out. This shaft is collapsible. This is like a safety feature in case you get in a wreck. Early like 67 columns had solid shaft. They turn into a javelin. If you ever get in a front and collision, I hope you're wearing a, a plate carrier or something because you just got impaled more than likely. Uh, this is made, this is more or less just a, it's a roll pin, but it's made to be a shear pin. If you get in a heavy enough front and collision, this rod probably ends right here. It will collapse all the way down here, all right? This end spline was welded on by I did it. This, this is double D rod, and it is welded on to this U joint down here. What I will end up doing, you can see it's got some play in it because it's just sleeved into this. I'll probably knock this out and take my length out of this rod straight from this double D. I'm hoping it will still allow enough room to uh, collapse, maybe. I will also end up having to cut this end off to weld on to this shaft. I don't actually know if I'll be able to. I know this shaft I think is originally made to weld on to a, a round slip or even the, this double D shaft. So I might not be able to do anything with this lower half. I might just end up feeding the double D straight into that. The new setup will have a whole lot of U joints. So it's not a long shaft. I'm not as concerned as of a with a safety issue of being impaled since there's so many u-joints i feel like if there's a front end collision the u-joints are all just going to buckle so I, it's not as big a risk i don't believe if i'm wrong correct me in the comments i don't know i'm not an engineer i'm not a i don't analyze crashes etc so could be wrong so anyways uh don't remember if i went over this other e-pass system but more or less this will be at the bottom of the column, close to it at least. This shaft slips on to here. This gets cut off somewhere in here. This shaft gets fed into this and welded. And then this feeds out. That completes this unit. Now, the kicker is my since I have this tilt column, I can't uh, slip the whole tube over the top because of this ball joint. Normally you'd be able to just slip this whole piece over and you just bolt on here because this piece here gets cut off, fed through this as a sleeve and pushed into the bottom of the tube. And then this gets welded on down here somewhere. So you essentially just slide it down the whole shaft and bolt it down. I won't be able to quite do that. Since I have this, I will have to, after I cut this or whatever, before I do any welding with this, because I don't think that will slip over that. In fact, I'm almost damn sure it won't. Yeah, definitely no way. So, I'll before I do any welding with this onto here, I will have to slide that into place onto this so it's in place ahead of time. Um, but like I said, I'm not for sure if I'm using this versa E-Pass system. From what I've been reading, some people say they're too sensitive at higher speeds. There's no way to adjust it. This runs in a fail-safe mode because it's just ground, power, and this is out of like any of the Nissans. I think it, like any of the Nissans, the Prius, uh, or Nissans and maybe Toyotas. Toyota's Prius, right? I don't know. But it's just a power ground and ignition wire. It goes into a fail-safe mode that gives part assist and I've heard some people having issues with it not doing the autocorrect back to center. So like if you're making a turn, you can release the wheel and it'll auto itself back to the caster. Um, so I, I don't know if it's gonna have that problem. I don't know if it's gonna be oversensitive since this runs in strictly a fail safe mode. There's no adjustment. Normally in the unit, it's hooked to an ECU and PCM and it's based off your vehicle speed and a bunch of other sensors that you don't have now because you're just retrofitting it in to obviously not the original vehicle. 
So the other options are like using an Equinox or a Saturn View. They have modules they sell on eBay. And I've heard some that there might be a speed sensor you can hook into it to adjust. I know they have a rheostat that you can just turn to adjust the sensitivity. That's not really a solution for me in my opinion. I don't want to have to turn a knob when I'm parking and then turn it to like nothing when I'm driving down the highway. So having it able to hook to a speed sensor would be great. But I don't know. We'll find out. So the other thing I wanted to mention in this video is if you followed the, uh, the video that I'm going off of that was put out by Follow the Build, he listed out a bunch of parts and this years were like 07 to 12 Versa that he's using. He recommended this, uh, or he listed out the parts and he had a three quarter inch and then he had a one inch bearing. And this is to go on the firewall for supposed to be this shaft to feed through. Now on his, I could have swore I saw set screws in it. Mine doesn't have that. Mine has this indention at the end that keeps them from separating. And once he separated it, he fed this larger piece through this. This is three quarter. The other one he had listed as an inch. This is neither inch nor three quarter. This is neither inch nor three quarter. So I don't know if a different year shaft was a different diameter. I might have to order a different shaft. I don't know. So I, I gotta go research that. Um, still waiting on to see if he'll actually reply with anything, any info, but before I do any cutting, like I said, I wanna do more research. So if you're doing this right now, I'd hold off till I get more answers if you're going off my videos. But hopefully by the time you're doing this, this video has been out for a while and I've got answers for you. Stay tuned for part two. Later guys.